think on that as you listen to these words. Amen. That water of life flowing from the throne of God. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, come to the water and stand by my side and drink from the fountain. You won't be denied. I have seen every teardrop that fell from your eyes. And I rose to tell you, for those tears I died. He said, come to the water. Yo 
you to open your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and we've been talking about the devil's plan, amen, to destroy uh, your family, you, your nation, all that pertains to you, and uh, we're going to come back there again this morning, but we're going to look at it in a different way, amen. We want to remind you, amen, and we're beginning to look at a, a somewhat of the spiritual aspect of what you and I are involved in, no choice of our own. Amen. The things we'll discuss today, you are born into. Matter, matter of fact, if, even if you're not saved, this war still goes on around you and it's for your soul. The battle for your soul. The souls of men. Amen. You and I all are also called to be spiritual warriors. We're to fight for the souls of people. Amen. To break the bands of darkness so they can see. And once they can see, they'll come to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, that's not what we're going to talk about this morning, but in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, amen, I'm going to call today the plan exposed. Amen. Satan's plan to destroy your life, your family, and your country. Amen. And our part in what we are called to do. There's a call going out from the Spirit of God to rally his warriors, his people, church. God wants to shake us out of complacency. And I remember years ago when Brother Tim, Evangelist Tim Woodson came to this city. This was in 1995. And one of the three principal strongholds he sensed when he came here, amen, was tribalism, amen. That was racism back then, amen. And um, apathy was the second one, amen, and the religious spirit. Most folk in this area believe they're all right with God. Amen. They say, yeah, are you saved? Well, I belong to a church. Well, belonging to a church is not salvation. Amen. Most of the people that we witness to believe that because I was brought up a certain way, they're all right with God. Just like folk identify as being the sex that they aren't, they identify as being Christians when they aren't. See, if you identify and self-name you a Christian, that's not what makes you a Christian. Yeah, Pastor, you're starting off hard this morning. Well, we need to get it right. Why? Because eternity is in the balance. Amen? We're not born Christians unless we are born again as one. Without the second birth, we'll die in sin. There's a battle that's raging for the souls of men to keep them blinded and in darkness. You and I, the body of Christ, we're called and chosen. Part of our assignment is to undo the works of the devil. Amen. And so we've got to kind of shake ourselves because that second principality in this area is apathy. You know, most Christians, you know, don't really act very concerned about the things of God. Amen. Well, I read my Bible, you know, when I feel like it. Amen. I pray when it's convenient. See, the devil's a lot more serious about what he does than what we're called to do. Amen. And God wants to wake you and I up, amen, and to re-engage us in Jesus' name because part of their strategy is to wear us down. Amen. amen, to weary us out, to get us so distracted that even though we know God, we're born of God, we're on, on our way to be with him, amen, we'll be rendered ineffective in what we do. Why? Because the pressures of life. Amen. amen. And so today, amen, 2 Corinthians 2.11, if you're there, let's read this um, scripture aloud together. And um, actually we'll read 10 just for context's sake. Amen. And then we'll pray and go into our word. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, 
for we are not ignorant of his devices. Amen. There are some things that you and I need to know. Amen. Paul stressed here that you, you and I are not to be ignorant. Amen. Ignorant, you know, always kind of preface that. It doesn't mean that you're dumb. Amen. It just means that we are misinformed. Misinformation is a word that's really thrown about a lot today. Amen. Amen. But really, you know, it came from here first. We're not to be misinformed about the devil's strategies, his schemes, his M.O., the way he attacks and how he seeks to twist you and, uh, you and I up so he can destroy us. Amen. And all that pertains to us. We're not to be misinformed. And the devil has misinformed so many over the course of history and our day concerning some key things that we'll get into on today and going on into the week ahead. Let's pray. Father God, we give you praise for your word. And I pray, God, that you would open our hearts. Give us eyes to see, hearts to understand, and a willingness to apply. I pray today, God, that we all not be forgetful heroes, but doers of the deed, that we might be blessed in Jesus' name. So we thank you, God, for giving us application to what we hear and God that you'll shake us and stir us God and then use us we pray in Jesus mighty name and all God's people said amen amen, amen. amen. notice what he said amen now the forgiveness aspect we'll get into a little later in verse 10 but he said lest Satan should get an advantage of us amen the devil is always looking to get the upper hand in your life amen, amen. amen. and and so you and I I hear some ringing. Um, the enemy is always looking to get the upper hand against us. The issue is, do we know how he operates? Amen. Or am I reminding myself concerning that very issue? Because if we don't keep some things in front of us, some things you and I let slip. Amen. And then one of the things that we'll see is that God is not going to do for us what he told us to do. Amen. Well, if it's for me, it's man. Well, it can be for you, but if you don't embrace it and go after it, you don't get it. Amen. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven, of God, suffered violence. And the violence do what? You take it by force. You go after what God has promised. In other words, God is calling you and I not to be complacent believers. Amen. We've got to go get it. Amen. And we've got to move. But before... I want to look at some things that we need to remind ourselves about concerning the enemy, enemy because there's no excuse for you and I being spiritually ignorant, Amen. misinformed. Amen. Now, I know that where I was raised a certain way, well, now that I'm saved, I need to be raised another way. Amen. 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 See, I can't blame how I came up for where I am right now. Mm -hmm. Too many people park in what they experienced, mm -hmm. and they lose sight of what God is currently doing because they're parked back there. We have been born again. Yeah. We don't have a past. No. We have a present and a praise God. We got a future. Amen. Amen. You and I shouldn't be bound by our past in yeah. today. Amen. But if we don't deal with our past, right. if we don't deal with the things that bound us in our past, you can be born of the spirit and messed up in the mind. So we've got to learn to fight. We've got to tear down those strongholds. In Jesus' name, amen. So there are some things that we need to know, that we need to remind ourselves. Look at your neighbor and tell him, remember this. Remember know this, amen. And remember that the devil is always a thief. He has a three-pronged mission. John 10.10 10 says that the thief cometh. The stealer is what that really uh, is in the Greek. The stealer cometh for three reasons. To steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so we have to keep in mind if he's involved in anything in any manner, it's going to be detrimental to you and I. It's not going to be for our good, no, ma no matter how pretty it's presented. It might look good. It might look palatable. But it might be something you want to taste and partake of. But to take it is to endanger your life. Amen. Endanger your soul. Amen. So you and I have to be aware, amen, and so that these things come to steal, amen. The devil uses lies, doesn't he? Yes. Amen. Oftentimes, amen, he'll try and keep us misinformed biblically. A lot of people are misinformed in the thinking that, well, you know, if we just hold our peace, God's going to fight our battles. No, he's not. 
you know, why in the world would he give you the name of Jesus, the word of God, amen, the armor of God, and the sword of the spirit, which is his word, amen, and then, t and then t tell you to sit back and let him do all the work. See, God works with us, but we've got to give him something to work with. And so the enemy wants to misinform us about that. And, and the thief has often stolen from us because we were waiting for God to move when God was waiting on us to move. Amen. You know, when we were saying things about us that gave Satan an upper hand or an advantage about us. If we are stuck in always saying about ourselves what we can't do. I, I can't do this. Amen. Well, I resisted the devil. Well, how long did you resist him? Well, I'm waiting on God to move him. Well, he said for you to do something about it. In other words, we can be misinformed about those things. And one of the great avenues of misinformation is what we listen to in song. Amen. A lot of our bad theology came through what we listened to. Amen. I remember I had to go and get out of me that I was climbing up the rough side of a mountain. <laughs> Amen. No, I'm not. The Bible said cast the mountain into the sea. I had to find out that, you know, that the devil, amen, yeah, he's an adversary, amen, and he does have a certain amount of power, but we, he uses our power against us. Often tends to what we say, what we listen to, and who we associate with. Amen. See, it's so easy to get misinformed. How powerful is the misinformation in music? Matter of fact, most of the stuff you see around you right now, you can trace it back to things we have been warning about going back into the early 90s. Yep. Yep. Before, uh, I remember, and I was really into music, and, and so I remember seeing the change over the generations yep. musically yep. to where a lot of it was kind of, Innocent, but, but around 1979, there, there came out a song, Rapper's Delight. <laughs> Amen. Somebody said, yeah, yeah, take you back, brother, right back in the day. Amen. That was rap, but, but it was innocent, but it began to so-called evolve. Yes, it and it became a vehicle for degradation of women, but then the exaltation of violence. And another element in the 80s mixed in called the gangster element. We called it gangster rap. Mm -hmm. And it glorified the gangster lifestyle. Yes, it, it glorified thuggery, didn't it? Yes, it did. Amen. It glorified prison culture. Amen. Do you know that wasn't an accident? No. Amen. Because the prisons became, became privatized and they will use that music as an off ramp from what you listened to to what you did mm -hmm. and what you, what you did to where you'd go. To prison. Amen. And so because of the music and the dress of the artist, what did the kids out here begin to do? Yeah. They began to sag their pants. Yeah. They began to wear the same hairstyles. Amen. They began to aspire to become thugs. Amen. Amen. Well, what, 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 what drove that music? Yeah. Amen. If we understand that the devil, that's his area, music. Yeah. You know, he was a worship leader in heaven and got a big head and got cast out. Yeah. He still uses it to transport messages. And even today, among believers, a lot of Christian young men still look like they're out there in the world. Amen. See, that's the great influence that this has on us. And we glorified the lifestyle, but it began with the music. And it became a vehicle of misinformation. And so people began to act like, well, they wannabes. Listen, a wannabe thug becomes a thug. Yeah, 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 that's right. And the lifestyle and the violence that it emulated, we're seeing and we're experiencing it every day. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we're, we're products. We're experiencing what that misinformation led this culture into. And it's not just all forms of music are embracing. That's how Satanism, it got in it too. You know. Um, you know, some of the most popular musicians today. I don't know why I'm going to I need to hear it. They, they, Taylor, Taylor Swift's a witch. She admits it. Her newest album is slamming Christians. Amen. In other words, 
These artists are reservoirs to misinform, especially our youth, because what you get in you when you're young becomes your views as you grow older. And you bring those into society. And so if we don't understand just how subtle the devil's operation is, we'll lose, well, we've lost a generation. That's still, and the thief comes but for to steal. Somebody says steal. steal. And that's how he's stolen our youth. Yes. They said that the average child that's brought up in a Christian home by the sixth grade, they're already gone. Hmm. Depending on what we allowed them to be exposed to mm-hmm. in school. Mm-hmm. Amen. They don't walk away until they get out the house. Amen. Amen. So you and I then have to have a strategy. And this is what we need to know. The devil is a thief. He's out to steal. Amen. And he loves to steal right from under us if we are wrongly misinformed. Well, I'm serving God, so God's going to keep my children. He told you to guard them. He told us to train them. He told us to disciple them. He said, train them up in the way that they should go. And when they're old, well, I'm going to let the church know. He said, you do it. What we do here ought to supplement what you do at home. It shouldn't be all that your children hear. They need to hear that certain lifestyles aren't right, not just here. They need to hear it from you in the house and what you expose them to in the house. Amen. 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 See, we're called to train them. Let Satan steal them from under our nose and we're looking. What happened? He's a thief. And he'll use anything to steal, lies, corruption, anything that we allow. Amen. Amen. He wants to traumatize our youth. That's one of the things that's happening right now with the trans movement. Amen. Traumatizing kids. Amen. And and why? So he can destroy. The thief comes but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's his ultimate goal. But first he begins to steal. What is he stealing? Traditional morality. That there's a right, that there's a wrong. Amen. That there's a male and there's a female. That there's a good and that there is a a bad. He begins to steal our traditional standards of uh, morality and standards. Amen. And and you and I have got to be on guard against those things so as to protect our household. He comes to steal. Amen. Amen. He comes to steal dreams, doesn't he? Amen. Amen. A lot of people don't aspire. I, I can't go as far as the man. What man? Here we are in the greatest nation in the world, and people are saying, man, you can't make it. Look, you can't make it in America. You can't make it anywhere. Amen. 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 People want to get here so bad, they're doing anything to get here, and we're going, man, you know, you know, because we so traumatized. Amen. You know, the, the lynch laws way back yonder, they got us all bound. Listen, that was way back then. Why are you still bound over that? See, that's how Satan steals present opportunities by people looking at what was done in the past. And you can't unscramble that. Amen. You need to get over that. Amen. Angry at folk that had nothing to do with what happened back then. Well, you know, they owe me 40 acres and a mule. No. All you owe is a level playing field. Don't be sitting around bitter, amen. Now, I know that you, you don't, but you know some folk that are. They still mad. They waiting yes. for theirs. Amen. They want reparations. Yes, so, so they want to take from people that had man, ha- No, whoa, 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 Pastor. Now, there were 5,000 black slave owners. Are they going to pay reparations too? See, these things keep people in a state of, of flux of anger and bitterness and unforgiveness, and it steals present joy. Sometimes even among believers, the devil comes but for to steal. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Why? All of me wants to steal your opportunity to be saved, to keep you dead eternally in sin, because you die while you're living in sin, you're eternally separated from Jesus. Amen? Amen. That's number one. Amen. Uh, we could ex- we'll move to the second for time's sake. Somebody say to destroy. destroy. Amen. That word Apollyon, Apollumi, amen, is where we get the word Apollyon from. Amen. To destroy you in the New Testament. And it means to destroy fully or to cause to die, 
to plunder or shipwreck your life. Amen. That's what Satan is seeking to do, to mess your life up. Amen. He's come to steal, to mess you up, and then to wipe you out, destroy you. Amen. Amen. And um, that's what he's up to, to burn you up. One of the words there um, carries a thought of uh, causing one to burn. Amen. And so if we don't watch it, we'll get caught up and Satan will accomplish that goal. So what are you saying, Pastor? We need to know how this at, what our adversary is after. Three things to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, in John 10, 10, B, uh, on the flip side, Jesus said why he came. Amen. Now, we're going to focus mostly on what the enemy is doing because the Bible tells us we need to understand his devices in our text, doesn't it? So we need to expose them from the word of God so we won't be misinformed about how he operates. Amen. Because if we are, he'll get an advantage over us. Amen. Now, he doesn't have more power than us, but if you don't know that you have greater power than him, you won't walk in it. Amen. 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 So the enemy is looking for a way to get you to operate against yourself. Matter of fact, Paul said, it, oh, man, he said, instructing those who oppose themselves. In other words, we begin to work against ourselves, our own best interests, when we don't know how to deal with this adversary, amen, the thief that's seeking to steal, to kill, and to destroy my life, amen. You know, he seeks to traumatize you even when you're young so that you'll be a grown adult traumatized over what happened when you were a kid. Yeah, we're going to go there in a little bit because a lot of Christians hadn't dealt with their childhood trauma. You're born of the spirit, but in your head, in your mind that needs to be renewed, you're still stuck back there. And people need to be delivered from their past. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So he seeks to steal those things from you. Amen. And to destroy your life. Also the enemy. Amen. Now, I would say Jesus comes that you might have life and that more abundantly. We'll treat that separately. Because we have to apply ourselves to get into that. Amen. Another thing the enemy does that we need to understand or another aspect of Satan is his nature. We need to understand that he is never, God is not going to use the enemy as your teacher. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost is your teacher. Amen. 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 And if we we'll listen to the spirit of God, a lot of things Satan do will get cut off, blocked. Yes. Because if he say no, amen, we don't do it. Amen. And so we need to understand that he is a murderer and a liar from the beginning. You know, we've heard John 8, 44, all our lives. Jesus said in that scripture that the devil was a murderer from the beginning. And so that's part of his nature to kill and destroy you. He's a murderer. Amen. First Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary. An adversary is someone who is anti, opposed to you. Amen. So he's set against you. He's, it might look might entice you with something that looks good and cause the pleasure in that sin, sin to be a pleasure, but it's always only for a what? Season. Amen. So we're told to be sober, be vigilant for our adversary. Say adversary. adversary. Our adversary is the devil. Amen. That word in the Greek is anti Amen. It means an opponent who is set against you. Amen. And so that that's a war term. If you have an opponent, that means you're engaged in a war. So what we're discussing right now is spiritual warfare 101. Mm -hmm. That there's an evil spirit out there seeking to destroy you, and he's the devil. Amen. Now, he uses his agents, which are demons as well, to participate in this, to set your life on a path of destruction. You and I, we'll see, have been given spiritual weapons to use. And if we don't use them, they go unused. Amen. We are to use what God has given. I don't want to get ahead of me right now, but we need to do that. Amen. And so we see in 1 Peter 5, 8, that he is an opponent that is set against us. And he's a, an accuser seeking to your adversary, the devil, the word diabolos, means he's accusing you. How many of y'all ever had these negative thoughts run through your mind? I have. You're no good. You can't do this. Nothing ever works out right for you. Amen. You know, if you were in a different period of time, and if you were born a different shade of skin, I mean, whatever, you know, he does those things, doesn't he? Amen. Amen. 
But see, he's a liar too. He's the father of lies. Amen. Amen. And so we have to understand his M.O., his method of operation, so you and I can stand against those lies in Jesus' name and then equip ourselves with the armor that God has given us. Amen. So he's looking to get advantage of you. He's on the prowl. Amen. Amen. First Peter 5, 8 again says he goes about as a roaring lion. Amen. And he's seeking. He's seeking whom he may devour. See, he don't devour everybody. He's seeking someone to devour. That's why those animal shows can teach you a lesson. Amen. Amen. I like them when you get to watch the lion crouching in the grass. What's he looking for? An opportunity. Amen. Amen. On the prowl. They might follow a herd of, well, they don't, they don't, lions don't have a lot of success with wildebeest. Unless they can get a young one by himself. So what are they looking for? Christians that stray away from the crowd of believers. To get you to stop fellowshipping with the saints of God. Get you angry at your fellow church member, amen. Disturb strife and divisions among us. Why? He's looking to separate us. Why? Because strength is in numbers. Amen. If it's sheep, he's looking for a sheep that becomes a stray sheep. And they'll just follow in the grass. And then all of a sudden when they're alone, then they pounce out. That's the description of the devil here. He's seeking whom he may devour. Amen. So he's looking for an easy target. Remember last week when Brother Green was here, he was saying that we need to be a harder target in the church. Amen. He's looking for a place that say, well, no guns allowed. But that tells me there's none in there. Amen. He's looking for us to have no structure around our life as well so he can pounce out and devour. Well, you know, it seems like, man, every time you hear a pastor, he's warning us. He's talking about current events. He's doing, I don't need to go today. What is he trying to do? He's trying to break you away from the flock. Now you sit out there by yourself. Or he's telling Christians this, especially in this day. Well, you know, you don't really need to go to church. It's all over the Internet. You, You know, you don't need to go to church. You better watch how you watch YouTube. They're saying, well, you don't need to go to church. And then a lot of churches got deceived during COVID into thinking you didn't need the fellowship, and a lot of people still do. Oh, yeah, we need to be together. And so they're talking about just how messed up this generation is now through isolation. That's a demonic strategy. Amen. To get you off by yourself. Now you're sitting in front of that little iPad. Amen. And a lot of stuff can come on that, not just school lessons. And people begin to find out how their kids were being led astray when they were at home. But a lot of isolation is a traumatic event. Amen. Matter of fact, they'll take prisoners when they're violent in the prison population and they'll put them in what? Solitary confinement. See, we're not built to be alone. And sheep aren't built to run alone. We're built to be in flocks. And so in spite of all that, the Bible said, forsake not to assemble yourselves together as a man of some is, and some still aren't. I know of a lot that still don't assemble for Bible study. We do it online. Well, you need to rub shoulders with other Christians. I can't sharpen iron unless I touch that other iron. We need to come together. Amen. Amen. And so we're made for fellowship. And the enemy wants to break up our fellowship circles and get us along. Why? So he can pounce and devour you. There's safety in the numbers. Amen. Amen. If any two shall agree. See, that's a safety in it. Amen. Well, the Bible says two are better than one. There's safety in that, isn't it? But if you break off and isolate, it's you alone. Our spiritual power is multiplied tenfold when we stand together. Amen. Amen. One can put the flight a thousand and two can put the flight ten thousand. Oh, so when it comes to the areas of prayer and those areas, amen, we're stronger together than when we break off apart. See, he's seeking to get us broken up and apart from one another so as to devour us. And we have to understand that's part of his nature. That's the way he operates. To make us an easier target. Amen. Amen. The devil likes to manipulate relationships. 
Matter of fact, a lot of us had to deal with trauma. I know I did from my past, even though I was saved. Matthew 10, 36, Jesus said your enemies could be those of your own household. Now, I, I took that out of context intentionally because he was talking about when you get saved, you might be the only one in the house and, you know, and people can seek to undermine your faith from within the house. But also authority figures in the home can mess you up. You know, if your father ain't walking out his relationship with God in the context of the home, guess what? Children get traumatized. Amen. And we can be born again and carry those traumas into our life relationships. Amen. Amen. Satan uses authority figures, whether it's father or mother. Amen. One of the reasons why we have so many effeminate men is because we have so many men not in the home. Amen. 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 Got one clap. Amen. And then when a lot of them are in the home, amen, they don't take that responsibility very seriously. Amen. See, we're called to defend, to guard, amen, to water, which means to feed in the context of home. Amen. And, um, and so we have um, yeah, the, the number one draft in the NFL this week, a guy named Caleb Williams. I've seen that guy. He wears dresses at times. Yeah, paints his fingernails all the time. He a feminine. I don't know if he's in or out the closet. I ain't never seen that before. And each time you see him with a phone, it's pink. And he wears lipstick. You don't think they're not try trying to send a message to your kids? This guy lost the game and jumped up in the stands with the cameras on. <laughs> and his mom, to his mama. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. See, the enemy is packaging and sending messages. We need to be on guard. Yes. Amen. You got to watch. If you see it, look. <laughs> Don't follow that dude. <laughs> so arrogant that he said, whatever ting sends me, I want piece of the ting. You ain't through a pass. See, it's not raised right. right. And I don't blame him for that. Mm -hmm. Because Satan wants to mess us up yes. in the house, yes. in the home. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So he needs our prayer. Amen. And um, because the home authority figures, I remember things teachers said to me when, when I was a kid in school. How about some of y'all? Mm -hmm. I wasn't positive either. Amen. 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 Some of those things I had to deal with. I remember things that people said over me as a kid mm -hmm. that became something that bound me. Mm -hmm. And after I got saved, I had to deal with it. This is why the Holy Spirit brings stuff to us after we're saved. I'm born of the Spirit, but I have to renew my mind. Amen. See, that's a different level of warfare. Amen. I'm born, I'm saved of the Spirit, but my old thought processes are still there. Amen. And if I was bound by how I was trained, how I was raised, how I was abused even, amen, I can carry those over into my Christianity and be a messed up believer. Amen. Amen. So don't be misinformed. We have to deal with those issues, and God, through his son Jesus, has come to set us free. Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Man, a lot of people can't give and receive love. Why? Because they got messed up in the context of home. Yes. It's one of the major reasons why the yes. devil attacks families. Amen. Yes. Amen. To mess us up in those areas. Amen. Yes. And to cause you and I to be depressed. Yes. Amen. See, we're talking about spiritual warfare 101. Isaiah 61 3 says that, that he came to give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So sometimes depression could be spiritually motivated, that pushing one down, and people need to be set free. Amen? amen? The devil comes to blind people to the gospel, amen. amen? If the gospel be here, it is here to those who are lost, whom the God of this word had blinded the man's, amen? Satan seeks to blind us to the reality of Jesus Christ. When we're saved, he seeks to blind us to what God do for me what he did for you. Amen. He seeks to blind us. So he wants to destroy us through lies, through blinding us spiritually, through isolation. Amen. 
And um, he wants to press on us to, so as to push us down ultimately to cause you as a Christian to look like the world. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. By the way, you know, don't let gospel singers dictate how, what you believe too. Amen. 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 Devil uses them too. See, you got to stay in the word of God. Amen. Let Satan get an advantage of you. Amen. 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 I started to say something, but I ain't. I'm going to be nice this morning. <laughs> Amen. Second Thessalonians 2, 4 says, he opposed it and exalted himself above all that is called God. That's all you need to know about the devil. If God is for it, the devil's against it. Amen. If God is moving in it, then the devil is going to oppose it. We need to remind ourselves about these things. Amen. Why? Because Satan is not just a liar. He's a schemer. And he's always poking and prodding, looking for that advantage. You know, chinks in our armor, where we're weak, where we have our guard down. You know, where we're undefended, where we're vulnerable. See, all of us, you know, we need to, all of us have weak spots, weak areas in our life, don't we? Yeah. Well, if we realize where we're weak, yeah. my strategy should be to fortify that area, get stronger in it. Amen? Amen? You know, you don't have to stay weak in, in an area. We need to build ourselves up with God's word. Yeah. Amen. And that's just a... a inkling of what the enemy is and what he's seeking to do. But it all is encapsulated. He seeks to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Amen. On the flip side, opposite, we need to remind ourselves as spiritual warriors why Jesus came. Amen? Amen. And the second part in John 10, he said that you might have life. Now, if he's opposing all things that is opposed to God, that means Satan is trying to keep you from experiencing this everlasting life. Amen. So he lies to get us to procrastinate about salvation. Amen. He lies to draw us away into different religious systems, doesn't he? Yeah. Amen. Why? Because if we die in sin, we're eternally separated. Yeah. Jesus came that you and I might have life. The word in the Greek is zoe. It means absolute life. Life without any semblance of death in it. Amen. See, the Bible says concerning Jesus, in him is life. Well, he says, now you and I are the light of the world. His life is now in you and I through the new birth. Amen? Amen. 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 I, that's why Jesus said in John 11, you know, one of those funeral scriptures, he said, he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Why? Because we have life in us. We're born again of the Spirit of God. We have eternal life. John 3, 16 said, you know, that if we believe, amen, in Jesus, we will have what? Eternal or everlasting life. That's why God sent his Son into the world. So we believe and we have eternal, everlasting life. You and I will never die. Pastor, this body, yeah, that's not you. That's your shell. You live in your body. The Bible calls this body our tabernacle. Amen. Yeah. At some point, this body, if the Lord don't return before we physically die, yeah. yes, it'll be put in the ground. Amen. Amen. But the real you, yeah. absent in the body for a Christian, present with the Lord. For an unbeliever, absent in the body, present in hell. Amen. Amen. See, all people live forever. Yeah. The issue is where? Amen. And this Zoe life is only for believers. Amen. Amen. Everlasting life in the presence of God is ours, and we receive it when we got saved. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So he came that we might have this life. Amen. Amen. But why did he come? Number one, before he did that, if you're writing scriptures, 1 John 3, 8. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest or made visible. So he said, this is the why. Now, there are a lot of ways, but this is the first way that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. What's the primary work of the devil? Death. Yes. Amen. Jesus came so you and I could have life, yes. but in order for you and I to have the opportunity of everlasting life, he had to deal with the one that brought death. Amen. Hebrews 2.15. Amen. Amen. And so he had to deal with that issue, amen, Hebrews 2.14, I'm sorry, that through death, 
he might destroy the one that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver those who through fear of death all their lifetime were subject unto bondage. He goes on to say he took on him the seed of Abraham so that through death he could destroy the one that had the power of death. Amen? Amen. Amen. So Jesus came to undo. Hebrews 2.14 when it says that he likewise took part of the saying that through death he might destroy. It's a different Greek word for destroy there. It means to render idle, ineffective, Satan's ability to take your life spiritually. Amen. That through his death, he would deal with the one that brought death into your life through the new birth. Praise God, I'm saved. Amen. Amen. He came so that he could render idle, amen, the one that had the power to death. He can't stop you from getting saved. Amen. The moment you say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, there's not a devil in hell. All the assembled host of darkness cannot stop the new birth from occurring once you call on Jesus to save you. Why? Because he's been rendered idle. He's like a car in park there. He can't move. The decision is ours. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Amen. And the choice to be saved becomes the choice to serve every day after you're saved. Amen. Amen. The enemy wants to get you and I to slack up on the job. Now we need to keep pressing on in Christ, Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So he came to Give us eternal life, didn't he? Yes. Amen. That's why Jesus said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. That's why Luke nineteen ten states that. You and I were lost. He came to seek us. But first he had to deal with the blockage, the one that got us in that predicament. Yes. Excuse me. Got us in that predicament, the devil. Amen. And he died and dethroned him in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. This is spiritual warfare 101. The devil's opposed to you. The Lord is for you. The yes. devil had you bound. Jesus came to save. Yes. You become the deciding witness. What are you going to do about Jesus? Amen. Amen. Are you going to say, well, Lord, I'm going to serve you at some time in the future, or are you going to give him your life now? Amen? Amen. And so he places us in a position where you and I have to respond to the offer that he made. Amen? Amen. And this is part of what we do in evangelism and witnessing. Amen. We don't have to force people. We present Jesus. Amen. 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 And at times we need to let them know why they need to be saved. Yes. Amen. I wish someone had told me I needed to be saved when I was younger. I knew I needed to go to church. <laughs> I went to church. Amen. I knew I needed to do something. Nobody told me how. How many of y'all went through most of your life, nobody told you? Well, I, I, I was in church, attending, oftentimes faithfully. Youth choir, taking up offerings, youth day, quoting verses, sunshine band, going around, amen. But no one ever said, brother, you need to give your life to Jesus. I heard the doors of the church are open, but nobody told me how to get in. I thought it was an organization. I didn't know the church was a body. And so like a lot of people, even in this area, they joined the church, yes. thinking that joining the church got them right with God. Amen. Say deception. Amen. See, that's a substitute. That's not the real thing. Amen? Amen? We also need to know, in addition to Jesus coming to give us life and that more abundantly, when we received that life, we became an overcomer. Yes. I think I heard myself stressing that the other week. Amen. You don't try to be an overcomer. You are an yes. overcomer. Yes. Amen. Paul said we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Jesus won the battle. You and I are the beneficiaries of it. We partake in the fruit. Amen. 1 John 5, verses 4 and 5. Amen. The fifth verse says, who is he that overcome the world? Understand this about the world. The world is under Satan's control. He's called the God of this world, little yes. g. Yes. Whom the God of this world had blinded the man's. I think I'll get more into this next week about the world, but I say this right now. The word world is the word cosmos. It means how it operates, the system. There's a system in the world designed to keep you from Jesus. 
The world is designed to keep you from Jesus. How does it do that, Pastor? It uses religion as a substitute. Amen? One that empowers you through your works. It's every false religion. It's a system of works righteousness. You need to do this if you want to go to heaven. See, we believe on Jesus. They might say, Jesus, plus you need to do this. You believe on Jesus, but Acts 2.38 says, if you're not baptized in the name of Jesus only, you won't be saved. No, we're first baptized in the Christ, then we get baptized in the water. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Or they might say, you need to go and do this, go through this ritual, go through that. You know, yes. like sororities and fraternities and all those things to get the right. Mm-hmm. That's works of righteousness. Whether witnesses or Mormonism or Islam works righteousness, you got to pray toward Mecca five times a day and go on a hajj at least one time in your lifetime. And to ensure that you go to heaven, you got to fight jihad and hopefully die so so you can get your virgins in heaven. See, those are are, are, are false things to pull people away from this gospel. Gospel is simple. Jesus did the work. What must we do that we might work the works of God? He said, believe. Amen. 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 See, we believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Amen. The son of the living God. Amen. Amen. We believe that God raised him from the dead. Amen. And we are saved. Amen. But Satan uses religion to keep us away from the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So Jesus, amen, also has come, another reason, to equip us to deal with our spiritual foes. What do you mean? Well, he came to make us overcomers. You are now that you're saved, but you need to know how to deal with the devil because even as a baby Christian, he still seeks to draw you back, back into the world. So Jesus came to equip us to live life and serve him successfully. Amen? Amen. And part of that recognition, beloved, is to know you and I are in a war. You want it for your soul when you got saved. Amen. Yeah. Now you have to fight to renew your mind, change your Amen. thinking. Amen. Amen. To get this body, this flesh in land, because this flesh didn't get saved. Mm-hmm. Amen. It's still prone to lust. It's still subject to habits. Amen. Amen. You know, our thinking, amen, still bound in areas of our fault life. We've got to take those territories for Jesus. Amen. This is why, as a believer, you need, you must go to the Word of God. Yeah. The Word of God washes you. Amen. The word of God cleanses us. Amen. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way but by taking heed to the word of God. The word of God enlightens us. The word of God trains and teaches us, doesn't it? So we need the word of God. Amen. And part of our equipment is to go to the word. Why? Because the devil don't want you reading this. And that's why so many excuses come, amen, because this is spiritual food to use against your unseen and spiritual enemies, amen. We have an enemy that's spiritual. Our adversary can't be seen. I remember one time years ago I was in a church and uh, a drunk came in during a service and, uh, you know, I, I was a new believer and he came in and evident, evidently, you know, he may have gotten saved at some point but had fallen back, but he was, I mean, he was stumbling drunk. And he must have believed that it was because of the devil. He came in and he was, I hate the devil. I hate the Nobody went to that man to seek to deliver his soul. I'm a new believer. I don't know what to do. They got him and led him out of church. See, you and I are called to set the captives free. I've seen that happen a couple of times. Y'all know here, if a devil manifests, we're going to deal with it publicly. Why? Because you need to know that the greater one is in you and see it in operation. We had it happen in the past. We dealt with it in the past. Amen? Hallelujah. But we are at war, and there are spiritual enemies, and so God gave us an armor to wear. It's called the armor of God, isn't it? 
Amen. That's part of our equipping. We'll get into that more a little later. But if you don't use it, it don't work. So part of our requirement as believers is to learn to use what God has given. Because remember we said in the beginning, he doesn't do for us what he told us to do for ourselves through him. Amen? Amen. If you'll let the devil run over you, he'll let the devil run over you. Because he told us what to do when it comes to the devil. Amen. See, saints, we got to get a, a battle-type mentality on us. Amen. We're in the last days. The world's falling apart. Yes. Yes. They're looking for those who aren't falling apart with it. So they can come and say, how, how do you make it? I mean, what do you do when you see all this stuff happening? Yes. Yes. Well, praise God, we got a rock we run to. Amen. Amen. The rock of our salvation, amen. Hallelujah, amen. He sustains us. We stand on his word, amen. His word is a rock, amen. We know his promises. His promises encourage you in that. He said when we see these things coming to pass, look up. Your redemption is drawing that. So, yes, it can get rough in the world, but we have hope because of who we know. Amen. And the world is going to be looking for somebody that has that hope, that has that peace, that has that assurance. And then you and I can tell them, I can introduce you. To the one that gave me the peace. Amen. That gave me the strength. That gave me the joy. That gave me the ability to stand and not cave in. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, I believe, I'm believing for that before the Lord comes. That they'll be seeking us out. Amen. Amen. Because the world is falling apart. And everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And only that that cannot be shaken will be standing and ought to be the church. Amen. It ought to be you and I standing in the midst of a wicked and perverse generation yeah. as a light. Amen. amen. A city set on a hill. Yeah. So when they look, I got to get where those folk are. Amen. They have something I don't have. Amen. amen. They're suffering. They're going through tough times, but the tough times aren't destroying their lives. Amen. I need what they got. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the night I got saved, I was sitting in the congregation. Whatever they got, I want it. Oh. Amen. They just brought me in. I was saying I'm a fly in a bowl of milk and all those kind of, see, those were deceiving lies. I'm telling you, the devil will try and keep you from getting saved. I went to church that night thinking if I get in good enough with the boss. Now, I knew I needed to get saved. But I was going to wait until I was 25. I was 19. So I was really in danger. Satan trying to destroy my life. And so I'm going to wait until I'm married, got two cars in my garage, and a nice house because I didn't think, see, I feel for the lie, you can't have anything if you're saved. See, the devil is a, is a liar, and he used that to procrastinate me. After I'd read the Sin of Prayer, after I'd read the late great Planet Earth book, after I saw the need to be saved and how to pray to get saved in the end, now I'm going to wait six more years. Then I went to that Dotson dealership with Dotson, not Nissan back then. And the owner kept saying, man, come, come, come to our church. And I said, yeah. the devil said, yeah, you might get in good with him. So I went and I got there. And I saw that, you know, that the lady I was with, she's a preacher now too. And me, we were the only black people. And the devil said, see there, you're like a fly in a bowl. I'll never forget this. You're like a fly in a bowl of milk. I'm standing outside the forest. I'm already late because of distractions. My self-imposed distractions, Amen. not leaving home on time dragging. Amen. Amen. Picking up a drunk, and I don't know why I did that. Oh, he wouldn't God. get out the car. I had to oh, physically God. take him out the car. And then I'm telling her, look, we too late. We may as well, oh, no, we in Elizabeth City now. Let's go to church. Mm-hmm. She didn't quit. Got there, got in there, and the enemy said, see there, you the only black person in her that, that's in there. And those ushers and greeters, I, keep, I tell y'all, that's why I love them. Oh. Yeah. Amen. They came out. They were inside. They came into the foyer where we were and grabbed me and hugged me. And I was going, huh? <laughs> and set us down. And I'm sitting there thinking, whatever they got, I want it. Amen. See, they displayed the love of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, you see, they had a light. They had something I did not have. Amen. Right. And when the invitation came that night, I still acted the fool. <laughs> but when I finally said, he's standing up there pointing and I'm back here going, he calling you. <laughs> when she going, she calling you. Amen. And finally I looked at him and said, he said, yeah, you. 
Uh, God has different ways of reaching us, doesn't he? Amen. He knew I needed to be saved. Preacher's name was James Anderson. Amen. And I went down there and he said, oh, you, you want to be saved? That's all he asked me. I shouted out, yes. Yeah. He laid me in a prayer and I must have fell under the power because I don't remember nothing else that I got up. Amen. But I knew I was changed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, the gospel has that power, but I still had to renew my mind. Amen. Yeah. I'm still limited in my thinking and in my thought life and, and who I could be in Christ Jesus. Amen. But Jesus came to empower us, praise God. Amen. He came to give you and our power. Amen. 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 You shall receive power after what? The Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be a witness unto me. Amen. I found out that when I got saved, that meant that the greater one now lived on the inside of me. Saints, we need to know this and walk in it. Amen. It's one thing to hear it. It's another thing to apply it. Amen. Amen. I remember the first day I heard that. I heard a preacher shout out on the radio, greater is he that's in you, he, he that lives in the world. And I go, is that in the Bible? And then he quoted 1 John 4, 4. I got the Bible and read it. So praise God. That's greater one is in me. Greater than what? Greater than the devil. Amen. Greater than demons. Amen. Amen. Greater than the lads that I believed all my life. And I got hungry for the word. Amen. And my boss said, if you're not busy, that's your assignment. Read that Bible. I was literally getting paid to read the word of God at work. Amen. Amen. For a certain time. Amen. But, you know, it was that thing of finding out who I was in Christ. Amen. I wasn't under. Amen. Jesus said that he in me was greater than the one in the world. And that included every devil, every demon, every principality. But guess what? If I didn't learn to use the knowledge of who I am in Jesus, and if you don't, the devil will still steal your goods, rob your joy. Yes. Amen. Beat your silly. Amen. If you don't learn to use it because God is not going to do for you what he told you to do. There's a thing there in it. God is not going to do for you what he told you to do. So you can have all the power. Matter of fact, Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, behold, another one of the first verses I learned. I give unto you power. Say power. The word in the Greek there, depending on your translation, would say it's the word exousia. It means authority. That means you have been delegated authority, amen, from a higher to a lower, from God to us, amen. Like I'm your boss and I can assign, give you certain authority for your job, right? Now that means, amen, now I take you, amen, yeah, from your office, amen, if you have authority to tell workers on you what to do, you delegate, right? Right. You delegate. Amen. Jesus said, I have delegated authority unto you. So he said, behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents. The devil's that old serpent. And scorpions, that's another name for Satan and his demons as well. And over all the power, it's a different word used there for power. Here is power dunamis, just like Acts 1 and 8. The devil has a limited, yeah, he might have power in some areas, but you have authority over his power. Amen. So he can only do what you allow him to do to you. Amen. And so if the devil is there in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. Amen. Amen. He has to battle that. Look at Luke 19, 20. Jesus said, rejoice not that Devils are subject unto you, but that your names are written. So the devils are subject unto us, but we can't command them unless we use our mouth, our God-given authority. In the name of Jesus, I banned you. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go. Amen. He gave us the power to loose and bind, didn't he? But if we don't use it, no loosening and no binding happens. That's why I said he's not going to do for us. What he told us to do. Yes. Amen. 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 And so if the devil's on you, you won't rise up. If you won't ban. If you won't cast them out. Amen. Matter of fact, he said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name they shall put up with devils. No, he said, cast out devils. Okay. Amen. And so we need to drive them out. Amen. Amen. If you are put up with it, they'll stay right there. Amen. And even when you say in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. It, it don't mean they instantly go. He's going to bluff you. Amen. See, that's why you need to plant your feet and stand. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because you also know this, 
that if I submit to God and resist the devil, James 4, 7. That's a command, isn't it? Amen. Amen. So if you want him to flee, you got to resist. Amen. Well, I know God's going to move him out, throw out. No. <laughs> Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist. Fight back. And he'll flee from you. Let me wrap up. Tam is not a friend again. Amen. But we got to do this. And if we don't do it, he's not going to do it for us. He told us to do it. Amen? Amen. A couple of commands he gave us, and as we close, we'll do this, and I'll just stick um, here. He told us, he commanded you to be watchful. Now, last week we heard the term situationally aware. We need to have our spiritual guards up. Be sober. Don't be drunk. Be clear-headed and vigilant. Be watchful. Why? Because you have an adversary, the devil, Who's seeking to devour you. So we're commanded to be situationally aware in Christ. Amen. Be alert. Don't let your guard down. Amen. That means you be situationally aware. You got to know your surroundings. Saints, you need to watch who you're with and where you go with them. A lot of people lose their lives because they're around the wrong, they're around the wrong people. They're not involved in what they do. They're just hanging around them. Amen. Amen. Now you need to watch where you go and what you do. Amen. Be not deceived. Even communications corrupt good manners. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 33. But it literally means either communications or companionships corrupt good moral character. Amen. We need to teach our children, if you hang with the wrong people. They used to put it this way. If you run with dogs, you're going to catch fleas. Amen. You got to watch. Amen. You, you know, a person didn't become an alcoholic until after they took the first drink. Amen. Amen. Or addicted to porn or anything else. Amen. The first watch. Amen. Amen. See, we got to learn to guard our hearts. Amen. This is something we must do. Yes. Amen. Amen. We've got to learn to stand on our moral values. Amen. Yes. You know, Proverbs 1.10 says, my son, if sinners entice you, don't go. Amen. If someone's going to do something crazy, it, it, if they're your friends, uh, we're not that friend. We not no. Nah, I'm not gonna get involved in something wrong because of you. And if they're a true friend, they understand it. Amen. See, when you teach our kids before they get, how do you pick friends? Because mm-hmm. yeah. the word friend has been so corrupted. Yes, amen. Can I friend you? That's not a friend. No. That don't even rise up to the level of an acquaintance. You ain't even met some of these people. Mm-hmm. Amen. And notice in the world now, a lot of these folk are called influencers. TikTok influencers, Instagram influencers. What is that saying? They have an agenda to influence you. Is it for good? No. No. So even as a teenager, you got to watch the influences. Certain things you don't allow in your life. Amen? Amen. You got to stand. Spiritual Warfare 101, if you learn anything, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you got to make yourself a harder target. Yes. Watch who you hang with. Watch what you listen to. Amen. Watch what you let get access to your eyes and through your ears. Mm-hmm. Amen. amen. If you listen to violence, amen, amen. you're going to become eventually amen. violent. You got to watch yourself. You got to feed yourself the word of God. Amen. 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 Jesus commanded you and I to be biblically informed. Amen. To know who indwells us. Amen. To know the power of the name of Jesus. Luke 10, 20. Amen. Hallelujah. And to learn to use the weapon of the word of God. Jesus even did that to show us the way. Matthew chapter 4, the devil comes to tempt Jesus. And we, it is written. It is written. It is written. Matthew 4, 4, a man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. We've got to use the word of God. That's our primary weapon. It's Amen. called the sword of the spirit. Yes. But you've got to speak the word of God. So you have to resist through using the word. Amen. Amen. That's one way you resist the devil. Amen. Uh, we're going to get into how do you apply the blood of Jesus. See, we, we got misinformed. Devil, the blood is against you. That's not how you use the blood. <laughs> yeah. Amen. The blood is against you. I just told the devil, I don't know what the blood does. We'll get to that later. We don't have time. 
Amen. But I say it is a cleanse agent. Yes, Amen. The blood purges our faults, our conscience from dead works. See, if you know how to use the blood of Jesus, your past can't keep you in bondage today. Amen. Devil say, I remember when you, man, God can't use me because, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you get saved? Did you get washed? If I'm saved, I'm washed. Amen. Amen. So if I'm washed in the blood of Jesus, that means that what I did then is in the sea of forgetfulness. Amen. God isn't holding it against me. This is one way you apply the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so when you say, Lord, forgive me, he forgave you and he cast it away. He's not holding that against you anymore. The devil may, people might. But you need to know that the Lord has washed me. And even though my sins were as scarlet, now they are white as snow. I'm not going to be holding guilt when I stand before God because his blood cleansed me. Amen. Yes, yes. amen. The power of that blood, amen, of Jesus when you repent and when you use it. Amen. Yes. Amen. In closing, too, amen, remember your enemy is spiritual. Your weapons are spiritual. Yes. Though you walk in the flesh, you don't war. See, we're in a war. 2 Corinthians 10.3. Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. You don't fight with flesh. You aren't my enemy. Amen. Amen. People aren't your enemy. Amen. Amen. We don't war after the flesh. And our weapons aren't fleshly. They're mighty through God to pull down strongholds. This is where we take territory back in our thought life, in our thinking, amen, where we uproot how we were raised and get it right with God. See, we have to do that. Amen. We have the power in Christ Jesus to do it, but we've got to get our thinking straight with the word of God, amen? amen. Hallelujah. And so these are things we do, amen. And let, lastly, I want to remind you, submit, continue to resist the devil. Now, he might bluff you. It might seem like he's not fleeing. Amen. You keep resisting. Amen? Amen? But first, you got to submit. You got to come under God's authority. Amen? Amen. And, and so, if the enemy isn't moving, Lord, show me, is there something in me? Amen? Am I holding, going back to what we read in the beginning, in closing? 2 Corinthians 10. To whom I forgave, I forgave it. If you hold unforgiveness against a loved one, family member, it could be a spouse, against your parents, against people who said evil words over you, even when you were a kid, if you're still holding to that, he says Satan can get an advantage of you. Amen. You got to let God deal with you about your past. Amen. And you need to be willing to let, don't hold on to unforgiveness. Don't hold on to grudges. Amen? amen? Don't let your past, amen. Musicians can come up. Thank you, brother. Amen. amen. Don't let your past hold you in bondage in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Don't be bound by it. Amen. amen. See, the devil is looking for anything he can use to keep you in a state of being bound, yes. hindered in Jesus' name. Amen. And you and I are not to allow it in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of us need to pick up our shield and sword and get back in the fight. Pastor, I'm weary. That's one of the strategies to wear out the saints. God, I'm so tired. Tired of fighting. Amen. Anybody know what that feels like? I do. Amen. Man, it seems like I've been standing and standing, resisting and resisting. It seems like the more I resist, the worse it gets. Amen. Well, amen. Look, we, we, Paul said we hadn't resisted yet unto blood. We're going to stand. Amen. And so we're going to strap it on and say, Lord, I'm putting back on my armor. Amen. I'm shot at my feet with the preparation of the gospel. I'm, I'm putting on the helmet of salvation, and I got the sword of the Spirit, and I'm going to keep rebuking, and I'm going to keep speaking the word of God, and I'll say it until it's ended or Jesus come. Amen. But I'm not backing up in Jesus' name. Some of us got to get our fight back. Some of us had a little fight about us in the world, got saved, and let it go. No, you sanctified through the cross, amen. But you still be a one, one that'll stand. Amen. Because God is not going to do for you <laughs> what he told you to do for yourself. 
He gave you the power to do it, the strength to do it. Now it's up to you and I. We have to decide to do. God is calling us to action. Amen? Amen. To learn how to use the armor of God. Amen. Amen. You know, don't go out into the, on the battlefield with half your clothes on. You saved, you got on the helmet of salvation. But you know what, but knowing what the breastplate represents, the shod feet, how to use the sword of the spirit, how to gird yourself with truth. That's the most important part. Jesus says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We need the truth. Amen. Amen. We need the truth. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We just stopping. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Every head bowed, every heart. Amen. In the name of Jesus. If God is speaking to you. And, and you're saying today, God, I, I need to, I need prayer. The elements in my past that have kept me bound. There are things that, even though I'm now in the promised land and I'm born of the Spirit of God, Lord, I know I'm saved. But for some reason, God, I, I, I'm pulled back based on the past and being bound, Lord, in certain areas there. And God, I need help there. I'm weighed down. I'm beat. And God, I need the saints to come along beside me, Lord. I need the errands and the hers to help lift up our hand, my hands in Jesus' name. If any of you are here today and you say, that's you, amen. Just lift your hands. We're going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Anyone else in Jesus' name, amen. The wolves are out to come after God's people, amen. The enemy is out to steal, kill, and destroy our lives, destroy our homes, amen. Everything that pertains to us, he's out to destroy, in Jesus' name. Is there anyone else in Jesus' name? Anyone here not sure of their salvation, amen. And the enemy is trying to get you to keep procrastinating, question and you're saying Lord I need to settle this issue Lord I believe in with all my heart that Jesus is the son of God that he died for me but I've never asked him to come and take a residence in my life is there anyone now in Jesus name in the name of Jesus glory to God hallelujah 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 glory to God amen every head bowed every eye closed just for a moment amen in Jesus name Glory to God.